G'day everyone and welcome down to Beasley Reserve for this week's episode of Espinel TV. Huge game this one between the top of the table, Chelsea Heights, and the second place, Keysborough. A possible grand final preview. And of course it's Love the Game around a Victorian Responsible Gambling Foundation initiative to disassociate gambling from sport by focusing on the love of the game and not the odds. Let's go and check out what's going on. And as part of this week's Love of the Game Round, I'm joined by Tracy Collins from the Victorian Responsible Gambling Foundation. Tracy, welcome. Thanks, Will. Thanks for having us on the show. Always a pleasure. Um, tell us a little bit about uh, the Love of the Game Round and what is it? Okay, well, today's round, Love of the Game, is highlighting the Love of the Game, Not the Odds program that is delivered by the Victorian Responsible Gambling Foundation. And how does that sort of uh, how does that manifest itself? Well, we really want clubs out there in the Southern Football Netball League to be really refocusing on why they love the game and working quite hard to disconnect gambling from their sports. And that's what the program is all about. It's really important these days because, as everyone would be aware, advertising is really changing the way we see sport. So the program says to clubs, reconnect with why you're passionate about the game and look at how you can change things in your club setting to dissociate gambling from sport. A bit hard to do, there's gambling advertising everywhere. Do you think that sort of uh, contributes to a, a bit of a problem gambling um, throughout the community? Oh, undoubtedly. I mean, it, it's really normalising gambling or betting. So people often will say, well, it feels really normal. I see it everywhere. I see it on my phone. I see it at the train station. It's on TV while I'm watching the footy. So one of the key things is to actually say, <laughs> Just because it feels normal doesn't mean there aren't risks attached because clearly there are. Exactly right. And you do a lot of work in that space with uh, a few of the clubs in the Southern League especially um, to try and disassociate uh, gambling from sport and educate clubs about the uh, risks of problem gambling as well. Absolutely. I mean, in fact, I'd say the Southern Footy Netball League, not to pump up your tyres too much, but you are leaders in this area. I mean, there are probably 270-odd clubs signed up across the state, grassroots through to elite level. <laughs> There's a passion for the game, wants to get in, in there. They go for the Saints jumper. Um, so we've got a lot of clubs, but more than 20 are coming from the Southern Footy Netball League, which is brilliant. And the way that looks at club level is we come out and we do info sessions for players and parents if it's a junior club. Um, we work with presidents and charter champions to implement the program. And that can be everything from just having a check around the environment and seeing if there is any gambling advertising going on, looking at what's happening inside on the TVs, signage, that kind of thing. Yeah, fantastic. It's an important message. You're doing some great things. Tracy, thanks for joining me. Thanks, Will. Cheers. And I'm joined now by the two co-presidents of the Chelsea Heights Footy Club, Paul Larkin and Kelly Perryman. Kelly, I'll start with you. How's it work? Two club presidents, two figureheads, I guess. Um, it makes um, sort of like a lot of the work easier because you can concentrate on one thing and let the other president concentrate on something else. So, and because it's so much of a probably a learning curve for us this year, um, yeah, we seem to work together and it's communication too. We don't have communication that you know, will fall apart. So, yeah, spot on. And a learning curve. It's obviously your first year in the role. Have you found it? Uh, <laughs> Very um, busy, um, as I said, very much a learning, very much learning everything. I said some days I feel like I'm a counsellor, um, like an educator with all the boys and like a surrogate mother half the time, but yeah, it's just, yeah, goes with parcel, so it was good. Oh, fantastic, and how does Larks go in his role? <laughs> yeah, no, Paul's pretty good. Paul's been probably around the club a lot longer than I have, and um, he knows a lot of things that I don't sort of know from olden days and, and he knows a lot of the older players. So that's what we're trying to bring in, the older players back in. So Paul has that contact and yeah, no, as I said, he loves all the text messages we send and, <laughs> and that, all the phone calls, but yeah. Yeah, fantastic. Keep up the great work. Now, Larks, I'm assuming you uh, leave all the paperwork to Kelly? Yes, I do. I, it, it's a lot easier. So we've both got our niches. Kelly's good with the paperwork and all that. I'm probably a lot better as being the foot soldier, getting out there, talking to the troops. and Roll the sleeves up. Yeah, roll the sleeves up. You, you haven't experienced anything until you get a late night phone call that something's happened. So 
we, we're a good team. We work well together. We've gelled pretty well. And we're just moving the club forward. And the main thing is we're getting the old faces back to the club where they belong. Like I always say to the guys, you need to come back home. This is your home. And we always have them come back home. Yeah, very important. And uh, you're obviously doing a very good job off the field. And on the field, you're doing some great things. Top of the ladder and uh, a big game today against Keezy. How do you think you'll go? Pretty good, at, uh, so I've been saying to the guys, one week at a time, and uh, yeah, we've got a good bunch of young guys, a lot, a lot of them are local kids, they're all mates, and the thing is, when you get no, new guys come in, they go out with each other, they look after each other, and that's the best thing, it's like a big family here. Yeah, awesome, great to hear, well you guys are doing some great things, best of luck for today, hope you get the chocolates. So joining me now is the uh, coach of the Chelsea Ides Footy Club, Brad Canavan, and our Black Rome Sportswear Player of the Day, Big Phil Smith. Phil, congratulations. A little uh, Thanks, prize pack for Thanks, you there from Black Rome. Uh, we'll see how we go with it. But six goals today, mate. A uh, sensational performance. Oh, thanks very much. Appreciate it. Uh, looked unstoppable down there. Too big for everyone. You're the only bloke I can think of that marks with uh, four blokes hanging off you. Yeah, oh, look, it's, uh, it's either a lose weight and try and get out of the 50, but uh, I'd rather just keep it on and enjoy my life and uh, just not move very far from five metres from the square. So try and clunk a view when I'm on, I'll have a crack. But, um, yeah, try and get the boys in the game as well. Mate, whatever works, don't change it. An assistant coaching role this, this year, how are you finding that? Oh, uh, development coach, sorry. Um, yeah, no, I'm really loving it. All the young kids are... They're great to work with. They listen, and it's, it's been really inspiring for me the the way they grow. So yeah, it's, I'm really enjoying it. And a uh, sensational year so far from the club, top of the top of the ladder, and looking likely to uh, go deep into September. How far do you think you can go? Is the return to Divi One out of the question? Oh, uh, look at, at the end of the day. It's uh, I, I I don't like to jinx it, and uh, so but we are a very good side, and we've got great talent. And uh, we'll always give it a red hot crack every week, and I, I know that we'll we, we will put up a bloody great challenge every week. But uh, yeah, I'm not jinxing it, mate. <laughs> mate, I had to ask you that question because I know I'll get donuts out of him. But yeah. uh, <laughs> well done, congratulations on your performance, mate. Thank you very much, appreciate it. And for you, Bradley, uh, you must be happy with that performance. A couple of men down early on in the uh, in the day, but you yeah, fought through it. Yeah, look, it was um, obviously a big game coming off a loss for us, and to play Keezy. Uh, first versus second, it was it was a perfect game actually to come off a, a loss to play, uh, to prepare for. So, yeah, as you said, two down in the first five minutes uh, wasn't very helpful, but um, really proud of our group with the character and the will to fight sort of through that that those you know, that adversity. Um, you know, probably faded a little bit late, but uh, that can be expected. Be expected yeah. Rotations down and Harrington sort of hurt a shoulder. So, um, yeah, really pleasing effort in the end. And how are the two boys in particular, Robbo and Hines? Uh, Robbo will probably be the classic three-weeker. Hines has just got this little niggle thing going on, so um, maybe a week 
maybe a week with him, but you know he's the, on the other side of 30 now, so we'll manage them through um, and we'll get them back and we'll just put some other blokes in, into the fire and see how they go. That's what it's all about, mate. And um, yeah, you're probably not going to, uh, you're probably going to face them again at some stage during the finals. Did sure. you learn anything from them today that you could probably use against them later down the track? Yeah, there's a few things they did today which surprised us. I mean, we know that um, Humphreys and Morland and Goods spend a lot of time in the midfield, so we'd planned for that. Uh, we also uh, matched up a couple of other guys around the ground today uh, who'd been playing well over the last few weeks, uh, which worked in our favour. Um, they had a nice ploy early with dropping Sutton back in front of Phil. Uh, it took us a quarter to, to get that into our favour. So, uh, yeah, they showed a few tricks today and um, yeah, we probably showed them some stuff as well. So, um, nil all draw when it comes to trickery, um, but we were lucky to, get the, lucky to get the win in the end. And so with finals not too far away, what's the plan building towards uh, September? Currently in a uh, heavier training phase. Um, yeah, we've, got a, we've got a guy who comes down and does some work with us. and So the fact that we were undefeated a couple of weeks ago, we were able to put the boys into a um, heavier training phase. Um, and then management and just all this stuff that you can see going on behind you. The boys are off to the ice baths and recovery and stuff like that. So uh, we get some players back over the next few weeks as well. Um, and we'll add those guys to the mix. So it's good. I'm sure they'll love the ice baths. I hate them. Yeah, no, I'm not a fan. No, I never did them, but I make the boys do it. So, What do you think of ice baths? Do you ever get around them? Oh, they're awesome. They're <laughs> awesome. I love them. It actually goes in. When you're as sore as I am, it's, uh, it's good. Yeah, fantastic. Well, I'm not going to keep you too long, boys. Go and enjoy a couple of beers. Well done. And uh, thanks for standing on the uh, bottom step for the majority of the interview. Uh, too easy, mate. Thanks very much. Well done. Cheers. Thanks, Will. Well done, Cheers, mate. So, Chelsea Heights take the chocolates this afternoon, holding off a fast-finishing Keysborough in their top-of-the-table clash here at Beasley Reserve. But no doubt we'll be seeing a lot more of these sides as the year progresses. That's it for this week's Love the Game round. We'll see you at the footy next week.